<laughs> Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love that. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're back down in Ocala, Florida to check out a couple more cars from the seemingly limitless collection of Jim and Rick Schmidt. Now, these guys specialize primarily in low mileage, unrestored original cars. A lot of them a little bit off the beaten path, a little bit off the mainstream. But today, we're coming right at you with in your face muscle cars of the 60s, a fabulous Shelby GT500 68 and a Chevelle SS 396. Man, this takes me back in time. I feel young again. Let's do this thing. Well, Rick, great to see you again, man. Great seeing you too, Dennis. Man, you've always got such fun toys to play with. But you know, we we play with a lot of, you have a lot of pretty esoteric cars, kind of, you know. Yeah, um, we dabble around the fringes. You do. You can say that. <laughs> you do. But today, we're going to do some kind of in-your-face. Muscle 60s, cars. 60s muscle. You know, NPD, you know, we, we make our living selling parts for muscle cars. But <laughs> Maybe we're, we should but we're do something. Maybe we should do something, <laughs> Maybe something. We should so, do something so about it. So we brought it. a couple of really cool muscle cars out here. And the first one is a car that's probably closer to my heart in the collection than just about anything that we have. Well, this has been, like, in mm -hmm. the fam for quite a while, right? Yes, it has. It got away from us for uh, several years, but my father was able to buy it back in 1991. But, uh, but yeah, in 1975, my dad spied this car uh, for sale in the uh, classifieds in the Orlando newspaper and bought it for uh, 2000 bucks. <laughs> you know, in, <laughs> in low mileage, just like a, you know, a, a barely used uh, KR Shelby. And that became my mother's daily driver for the next few years You're, after that. Wait a minute, your mom drove this? this uh, yeah, yeah. Just she like was, around. She was the manager of the lingerie department at Moss Brothers at the time. <laughs> well, and, you got to look yeah. good. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what she drove back and forth to work. My gosh, it's a, you know, a 68 Shelby, 500 KR, you know, mm -hmm. king of the road. Yes. It's, it's the top banana. So, okay, let's talk about the Shelby, the, the Shelby Mustang. There was a lot of treatments that they did for style and, and, and also mm -hmm. for functionality. Yes, this is basically a Cobra Jet Mustang, but with a fully functional ram air hood with uh, louvers that allow heat to escape. It's got an oil air cooler hiding uh -huh. behind the grill. Uh, all the uh, transmissions were set up with uh, Ford's drag pack internals, so the car shifts very crisply and strong. You can break the tires loose. Is it four-wheel discs? Second. No, it's front, Still front, front discs, discs and rear drums. drums. Wow, that's yes, amazing. Yes, but it came with 15-inch wheels and was basically Ford's uh, heavy-duty uh, comp suspension uh, setup. Um, you had the roll bar and the racing harnesses and then just yeah, all right. the other uh, trim and features that make it a Shelby. But there's an awful lot going on with it. It's not just a Mustang with scoops. Now, the scoops here, are these decorative or do they have any functionality? By this time, the uh, lower scoops, which used to cool the brakes in the earlier year Shelbys, were just decorative. The top scoops, there's They're, fresh air vents saw, on the yeah. inside, so it's just a uh, overly styled way of uh, circulating <laughs> air in the cabin. Oh, nice, though. Right. But, you know, you're, you're right about, I mean, the roll bar and everything, that came as part of the package. Right, yeah, it came with part of the package as well as the harnesses. And I remember when I was a kid, and this was before we had airbags and all these uh, regulations, that uh, once I was buckled in and, uh, and had that harness on, the harness allowed you a lot of movement as you were a kid because it, uh, it only uh, engaged if uh, if you know if there was a sudden yeah. uh, stop or go, and this is the you know that that flyaway flyaway steering wheel. You open the door and it flies away, so you can get in and out easier. And then you have to have this locked back into position to start the car. There's a whole vacuum, uh, you know, uh, switch underneath the dash that makes sure that you're back into and position. And the, the to start Cobra it. insignia on the wooden T handle. On the wooden T handle, you can see on the seat belts in the console they have Cobra insignias in them. There's Cobras everywhere. So. Man. And it's, uh, well, I guess they call this what, Highland Green. I always talk about I, Highland I, I, Green. The bullet. Mm -hmm. It's the bullet green from the Steve McQueen movie. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, beautiful body style. And this has got, you know, when they when they relaunched the retro Mustang, a lot of it was based on Came the Came off the proportions of this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it really is a pretty car. And, the, and, and again, the, the Highland Green just casts all the shadows and makes you appreciate all the nice body. And that's so style. Shelby. And these are sequential mm -hmm. too, right? Yes. Right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. And how about the dual tips the, there? The dual tips anything? down there, uh -huh. that was specific to the KR. Prior to the KR, which the, the KR was introduced mid-year. Uh -huh. Before that, it was just the GT500 that had a single round tip. 
with a with an extra pipe on the inside of it. I think that looks really cool. Yeah, it looks like brand new license plate too. Sunshine That's State, nineteen sixty. New old stock <laughs> Florida, nineteen sixty. Of course, you guys plate. would yeah. have those, wouldn't you? Yeah. So KR is going to have the four twenty eight Cobra Jet. Cobra Jet engine, yes. Let's go look at it. All right. Boy, that looks brand new. We went completely through the car on this last restoration. Uh, and uh, left no stone unturned, and all the details as accurately as we could possibly research it and execute it. I see all the it. paint, you know, uh, the paint approvals, okay, and approvals. you got, you know, your, your your tags and your stickers, and your mm -hmm. hoses have all the right stuff. Yeah, but of course, all the right colors and paint dabs and and everything. We 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 put an awful lot of effort in the engine compartment. It runs like it's fuel injected. We've really got it dialed in. Well, let's let's take this Mustang out for a run. Let's do it. All right. Boy, I love the color. This is just, this is the right color for this car. It's, an, it's a business color for this car. It gives it the class, you know. I, red's great on some cars, but I, just, I didn't like the red on the <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> These things, the Shelbys, are just such icons of yeah. the era. It really, from a Ford standpoint, it was really kind of a marketing thing, wasn't it? You know, Ford took the extra step of, of taking uh, you know, somebody who was heavy into their racing program and fielding teams for them and Carol Shelby and, and actually promoting and, and uh, <laughs> making a legend out of the guy. A branded you know? vehicle, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give him a little taillight action there. Really a smooth engine for this much power. Yeah, so as, as legendary muscle car engines go, uh, the 428 coverage jet is really the smooth operator. It really is, you know. When they're really tuned right, these coverage jets are mean running cars. It sings, it just purrs. Yeah. But a 428 Cobra jet, you know, in lightly optioned form was uh, ready to take on anything that uh, Chrysler or Chevy or Oldsmobile had to offer. You know, of course, I'm not saying it was the fastest thing out there, but was it competitive? Absolutely. I love looking out over the louver hood and everything. It's also bumped up a bit from the stock hood, isn't it? Yes, yes, which uh, allows for the, the large plenum that's under there that collects the air through the two front snouts and then drops it into the air cleaner. That was uh, one, one year only deal as far as as far as this hood on the Shelby's. And what a great restoration on this car. It's not too often that you can jump into a 428 that's been sitting for six months, hit the ignition and it fires to life instantly. So before the restoration of this and you were using it, you know, kind of as a daily driver or pseudo daily driver, did people really uh, dig seeing a Shelby out and about being used like it's supposed to be used? Yeah, they assume it's a fake when they see it out being used. So really? They just, they just, you know, I think every Shelby owner gets that everywhere they go. Is, is that a real one? And then you say yes, and then half the people still kind of look at you with one eyebrow raised. <laughs> sure it is. Sure it is. <laughs> well, man, I always love Mustangs, and particularly Shelby's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much fun. This was this car though. This uh, 396 Chevelle was one of its competitors in the day? It was one of its competitors on the streets. I, the, the Shelby was quite a bit more uh, uh, expensive just being a Shelby. Sure. The, the Chevelles, the reason that they're, one of the reasons they're so popular today is because they were so affordable uh, back, uh, you know, during the day. Um, Chevrolet therefore sold a bunch There's of them. There's a lot of them out there. And a lot of them have, have survived, so. Well, beautiful car. Now, you know, the Chevelle, been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is a two-year body style, 66 and 67 personal preference, but I think this is the prettiest Chevelle ever made. Yes, yeah, I agree. And that the the, the combination of, of drive line, color options. Yeah, like this triple blue, you know, marina blue exterior, blue interior, and blue convertible top. I yes. didn't even know that was an option. It was it, rare, but it was an option. It, it, it's just, you know, just amazing. And between the 66 and 67, there's not a heck of a lot of difference. A little bit of uh, trim front, treatment in front and rear, right? Mm -hmm. That's about front, it. front and rear are the, are the major differences between 66 and 67, but I, you know, I think the 67 is the, is the home I, run of the two. I do too, I, and again, personal preference, but yes. it's my favorite of the two, mm -hmm. red line tires. But man, the interior, 
I mean, this this has obviously been gone through. Yes. Did, did yeah, you guys restore been... it, or, or was it? You no, it? it was this way when we bought it. What an interesting dash, though. You know, having your, your key up, you know, this whole panel that runs Having all of your door. knobs and controls up high really is nice because it's easier to reach. You aren't down there fumbling by your knees trying to read the, what's down there in the shadows. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then your gauge is set back under that mm -hmm. shade so you're not, you know, you're right. not getting light over it. Yeah, it's a very, uh, Chevrolet, I, I think, you know, whereas Pontiacs were typically very racy and ornate and a lot of chrome and a lot of activity going on. Chevy really went for clean, almost Art Deco designs in the yeah, 60s it's, it's nice. that, that were very functional and very easy to live with. It really looks nice. And then the four speed, yeah. you know. Yeah, with the console, you got to have a console if you got buckets. And, and the clock in, mm -hmm. in console. Mm -hmm. And I've got my funky little AudioVox FM uh, receiver. It was period, in the car. Period correct. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I tend to leave period correct modifications alone <laughs> if I find them uh, charming and, and, and it actually works. <laughs> I can listen to an FM station when I'm cruising. Not a whole lot to listen on AM anymore. Now, what oh, the far left gauge over there. Is that, That's uh, a tachometer, well, that, and, that it, was a, and it covers up the uh, turn signal on the left-hand side of the dashboard, so the way it's everything's wired is the turn signal is also in the tach. No you, kidding! You, so that it came that way? Yes. That's not an add-on? No. How interesting. I mean, she's just beautiful. I mean, it's like, I mean, again, just like showroom. Yeah, yeah. They Super have great sport. shapes. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. like uh, the, the earlier cars were pretty boxy in comparison. The later cars were very bulbous in comparison. And 66 and 67, I just always look at as just, as just right kind of and cars. And really across the GM line. GM was really, really on top of their game really in 66 was. and 7. So now 396. Uh, 350 horsepower. 350 horsepower, which so it was, was the bigger 390. Which was the option, that was the upgrade from the 325. It was really essentially, because it was the same cylinder heads, it was a uh, more aggressive cam and fitted with a, uh, a better Holley carburetor. But still hydraulic lifters? Yes. Well, let's go look at it. All right. Oh, now that's, that's real pretty, and boy, is that different than the Shelby. Yeah, that's a, this is the uh, polar opposite of the Shelby, <laughs> you know, and, and, and part of that is due to uh, GM's uh, front suspension design, which eliminates the shock towers that you got. Yeah, they uh, come in the you know, Mustang. I mean, they're, they're like you, right it's up just here. so much easier to work on these cars. You've got access to everything. You can just really? about crawl into the into the engine bay with the motor and, and work on it. But man, she looks just great. And you, you know, like like all your cars, you got all the chalk marks and the. Yep. tags and the codes yep. and everything. Lots everything of like attention to detail, and uh, and uh, we've got it running out great, and uh, the, the way it ought to. You know, it's, it's a huge priority with us. Is it's, it's not just getting it all detailed to look not pretty, just but, pretty to look at. but we want it to function like it would have been. That's my. That's what I enjoy driving old cars. Is the time warp? Is imagining that I'm back in 1967 and, and this the is car how is it brand was. new, and I just bought it. Yes, yeah. that's that's what I I uh, really enjoy. So. You know, slapping a bunch of modern parts on the cars, that, that takes away from the time warp experience for me. I like to put them back to original. Well, hey, let's go back in time. Let's, let's take this it. out for a cruise. All right. All right. Nice. What an interesting place for the switch. <laughs> Easier to reach, though. It is. It's right there. That'd be real nice when it comes to putting the key in. There's a little bit of, little bit of chatter on the clutch. Mm -hmm. Once you go in, you're going. This color has always been a fave. With that blue top, that blue convertible top. I love the, big, the bright blue interiors. So. This is called marina blue? Is marina right? blue. Marina blue. It's just a, cheers me up being in the, the blue <laughs> interior. It's so. a heavy interior. Yeah. This yeah. thing just looks really It's got different. a really distinctive yeah. look to it. It just looks different. Doesn't have quite the, the authoritative rumble that the Shelby has. It doesn't have as deep of a throat as the Shelby. It's a factory exhaust, but it's stainless steel. And stainless steel just always has a different tone to it. It does. And I'm not a big, huge fan of it, but. It's a little sharper. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a little more hollow sounding. Uh-huh. But it runs nice and strong. She sure does. I mean, it's real positive power mm -hmm. all the way through. I like having the speedometer kind of buried under that ledge. There's mm -hmm. no glare. It's really clear. Yep. Certainly an interesting place for the tack, though. You yes. 
kind of oh yeah, yeah it's talk over there. about an after afterthought. Yeah, right. We need to tack. Uh, <laughs> boom over here. Or maybe it was by design that they kind of wanted to give it that uh, hot rod drag strip, you know, yeah. look of an aftermarket tack. This is another hood that I like looking out over. Yeah. It's got some interesting yeah, lumps a, and bumps in it too. That's a great hood. I prefer the SS hoods that uh, Chevy did to the cowl induction hoods. And yeah. By the rate of cowl induction hoods we sell, I know that they're very popular. <laughs> they're very popular. They're though. very popular. <laughs> you find them on everything. I love the SS hoods with the chrome ornaments. It's a little dressier, I think. There was a lot of Chevelles on the road back yes. in, in the 60s. We've been blubbering about how great GM was in the mid 60s, but they were. They were. They were building such a fantastically built and reliable product, and people were buying them. And in good droves. looking too. Good, yeah. Good styling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were very tuned in to what people wanted. So until our next meeting, remember honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.